Well, good morning. Welcome to Debbie's Back Porch. So glad to have you with us today. You know, I live in Georgia and the summer heat can be brutal. And that means in July and August, you don't turn on your oven. So I got in the habit of doing meat in a skillet braise in my cast iron skillet. And I'm going to show you how I do that. And it turns out so well, I never cook it in the oven anymore, unless I have a really big one. Here are the few ingredients you'll need. Now let's get cooking. I have here a nice little chuck roast, got it on sale. It's just under three pounds, which is about the largest one that you can use this skillet uh, braise for. You would need a Dutch oven if you were gonna, uh, if you had a bigger one. And this method works just fine in a crock pot if that's what you wanna use. So I dried it really well, let it sit out for 20 minutes to come to room temperature. And I rubbed it in vegetable oil. I used grapeseed oil or sunflower oil. Now I have here a mixture, half and half, brown sugar and salt. And I'm going to just sprinkle that generously. And yes, the brown sugar is wonderful. If you've never tried brown sugar as a dry rub, please do. I'm using the Splenda brown sugar blend. Works the same. So rub it in all the way around. More salt than you think you need. Folks are always asking me, why is my roast beef dry? And I'm going to say, mm, my guess is you didn't salt it before you cooked it. Salt helps the outside caramelize and form a crust, which holds in the moisture. So I have here the skillet I'm actually going to cook it in. If you're using a crock pot, you'll have to use an extra skillet. And we're just going to brown this all the way around, not burnt, not really brown, but we want to dry the surface out. And this step is critical for a braise, but it's it's also good for any kind of roasting meat. Uh, you want to dry the surface out and let it start browning. Because once you put it in water, it won't brown. Uh, it'll turn gray. Uh, and, it, and it will also dry out more if you don't brown it. So I'm browning even the sides. We're getting a seal on the beef. And when I get it browned, I'm going to just drop the vegetables in the pan under it. And I may have to move them out of the way a little bit because this is on the large size for my skillet. And I need to be able to put the lid on. And then I'm going to add some beef broth. You can use water. It will make beef broth. But I have this beef broth and it's going to make it a little bit richer for using it. You can also use chicken broth. Chicken broth is neutral and will take on the beef flavor, but I have beef, so we're going to use it. Now, I put just enough to cover the veggies and come a little way up on the beef. For a braise, you don't want the liquid to come over the shoulder of the meat. I'm going to add a little salt and pepper to the veggies. The amount depends on whether or not your broth was low sodium. And you can add other herbs now if you like, thyme, rosemary, whatever suits you. Now, as soon as I get a little simmer, I'm going to cover this, put it on low heat, put it on the back burner. And a braise is cooking low and slow. I usually cook it about an hour per pound. Uh, and I'll check my temperature in about 30 minutes. It should be eh, around 200. I check it with a thermometer. Don't want it much higher than that. We'll be back in two and a half hours. And this is what we have. Now I checked it a couple times to make sure it wasn't too hot. The beauty of a braise is that even the cheapest, toughest cuts of meat get tender in a braise uh, because it just dissolves the tissue. Now I'm going to scoop out a pint of this yummy broth to make my gravy. I could take the roast out, pour it off, but this is, believe it or not, a little bit less messy. But you might want to do that if you have a fat separator that you want to use because I'm going to scoop the fat off the top of this broth as the fat for my gravy. Sometimes I have tallow that I have saved from making beef broth, but I don't have any right now. So I will just uh, scoop it off the top here. And I'm going to get enough to make up a quarter cup of fat. What I don't have here, I will uh, supplement with butter. What you see in the skillet back there is spatzel. This is going to be served over spatzel. 
So I will get a spoon and spoon off some of this fat when it rises directly into my skillet where I'm going to make my gravy. You see I've got a lot of those little beef bits in there. Going to make it so yummy. About a quarter cup total. And that took my broth down to less than a pint, so I'll add a little bit of water in. Now this is a quarter cup of flour. We're just going to make a roux here, and this is going to be, oh, just wonderful brown gravy, uh, which to me you always serve with a braised beef. And this will take just a little time. I had to switch to a whisk. And on medium-high heat, I'm going to brown it till it's a peanut butter color, like this. And you don't want to scorch it. You want to stir it pretty, pretty well. And then I'm going to slowly add the broth. Now, I'm not going to salt this or anything because there was salt in the broth from where I salted the meat. And you just stir it constantly until you get all that broth worked into the flour, into the roux. And you know, this won't lump if you do it this way. My broth was not cold, but it had cooled down a little bit. My roux was very hot. And just as long as you whisk it as you go, you won't get any lumps. And you can see, I need to turn it down just a little bit. And you can see that it's starting to thicken up. When I get all of that broth in, I'm going to add about an ounce of water to make it up to the pint. And that's basically all there is to this. When I add that little bit of water, I'm going to let this sit and simmer until it's the thickness that I want for my gravy. And do keep an eye on it because it will go from very thin to very thick pretty quickly. Uh, this, this is only going to take four or five minutes total, and then it'll be ready to serve. Now I'm plating up my spatzel. I'm going to show you how I serve this. So I'm just going to cut a couple of chunks, put it on top of the spatzel. I have a video on how to make the spatzel, by the way. I'll put a link in the info section. That beef is moist. It's tender. And with a braise, it's always going to be moist and tender. So I've mixed the vegetables and the gravy together. And I'm just going to drench it. You know, the gravy may be the best part. And I've added a little sweet and sour uh, German red cabbage. And I'm going to take a bite of this. This is so good. Every time. Tender, moist, juicy. Yum. Thank you for joining us on Debbie's Back Porch. Hope to see you again tomorrow.